Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is rebuilding a three inch scale Garrett traction engine and it's part three. There's been a gap in this series for a couple of reasons, the main one being all the parts had to be painted, and there have been plenty of other jobs at the Steam Workshop to keep me occupied, like the LNER V1 rebuild. To start this episode, I'm cleaning up the crankshaft. It's not particularly that bad, but there's a bit of rust here and there, and it's a bit scruffy. I can get at most of the rods on the crankshaft just by using Scotch Brite. But for certain areas, it's best to use a wire brush attachment fitted to a Dremel. I'll put the spelling on screen just in case you don't understand what I'm saying. Dremels come in many forms. This is a mains powered Dremel, and it has a flexible drive attachment fitted to the end of it. Be very careful when using Dremel tools because they're very powerful, deceptively so. They're not like the cheap things that you get, particularly the rechargeable ones that are really feeble generally. I know that because I bought one. The next power tool such as this that I buy will either be a Dremel or a Proxon. They're very good too. A serious health and safety warning. If you're using one of these wire brushes that fits into the Dremel or your Proxon or whichever kind of rotary tool you have, it is absolutely 100% essential to wear eye protection. I'm not kidding on this one. And keep the speed down. These small motor tools go very, very fast indeed. And it's not good if it's spinning too fast because what happens is the brass bristles fracture and come straight at you at an alarming speed. Hitting you in the face is bad enough, you can feel them pinging off your forehead. So maybe a full face visor is a good idea, because without eye protection, it could be a very easy way to get a nice guide dog to keep you company. These wire brushes don't last long either. They're not there for the duration. In no time at all, the bristles start to disappear. I'm sorry to go on about this, but it really is a serious health and safety warning. Anyway, that's the doom and gloom over with, and in the meantime, I've been cleaning up the crankshaft and it's looking good. It's a case of use the wire brush, then use the scotch bright, and then back to the wire brush until I get it fairly clean. The red part is not an issue, that needs painting, but I'm not going to paint that until the crankshaft is fully assembled on the engine. If I paint it now, it's just going to get chipped and will need painting again anyway. On the bench next to me is a very familiar engine. It's a 14XX, and I'm going to show you it in a minute, I'm just leading up to this. This was badly damaged when the shipper dropped the crate, I mentioned this in a previous video. But the young man who was at the steam workshop for a very short while started to reassemble the engine. Can you spot the not so deliberate mistake? Back to the Garrett tractor and I'm oiling the bearings. It's very important before assembling any main bearings or any moving parts on a machine to always apply a good coating of oil to the bearings prior to assembly. Today has been a funny sort of a day, I'm reassembling this Garrett tractor, or Garrett traction engine, and I must confess, traction engines are quite new to me. Over the years I've done quite a lot of work on miniature railway steam engines, and I've done quite a lot of work on stationary engines, but not on a traction engine. But to quote a cliché, it's not rocket science. So I'm sure I'll get there in the end. What I'm currently doing is fitting the bearing top caps. Previously I've already profiled these, so I know they're going to fit OK, and they're not too tight and not too slack. And to avoid damaging the paint on these very visible items, they haven't been painted. I will paint these parts green when I paint the flywheel balance weights red. The good thing about this traction engine though is it is definitely not watchmaking, it's a 3 inch scale model, and even though the full size is not exactly massive, this 3 inch scale version is quite big. Time to speed up the process now, because I want to go and have my dinner. What can I say about this? I'm just fitting two 2BA nuts to two 2BA studs. And very slowly the top bearing moves into position over the crankshaft. These bearings are a really good fit on this crankshaft. There is no shake at all, nor is it tight. It's technically perfect, so I'm quite pleased with that. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how I fitted the connecting rods to the crossheads. Unfortunately, the valve fork is in the way on this shot, but if you look beyond the valve fork, you can see what's happening. I'm fitting both of the gudgeon pins through the crossheads, through the connecting rods and out the other side. Well that's a simple thing I can hear you say, well it's not, it's not simple in the slightest, because fitted to the end of each of the gudgeon pins is an oil box. At the moment I can't get a good shot of this, but once the oil boxes have been fitted to the gudgeon pins, you'll see what they're all about. Fitting the gudgeon pin itself was fairly tricky, and that's where my pair of surgical forceps come in very useful. In this clip you can see that I've temporarily fitted the castellated nut on the end, but without the washer, 
so by rotating the nut I could screw the oil box into the gudgeon pin. Then I wound off the castellated nut, fitted the washer and put the castellated nut back on, only to find that the split pin would not go through the hole. Time to go outside I think and just have a minute away from it. This delightful little engine is a one and a half inch scale Royal Chester. I know that because I used to have one, although my version of the Royal Chester was built as a showman's engine with a canopy and lights etc etc. It was a very nice engine and it ran just as well as it looked. But unfortunately a few years ago my financial affairs took a downturn and so I had to sell it. This is a good example of a Royal Chester and it runs beautifully. It hardly makes any noise, the wind noise over the camera and it's not a windy day is louder than the engine. That's enough playing with traction engines in the car park, it's back into the workshop. So what I'm going to do is file up these castellated nuts which are handmade and they're not very good really but they'll be okay once I've reprofiled them with a needle file. Normally when holding things in a vise I would use a couple of pieces of brass angle to stop the teeth on the jaws of the vise from marking the work. For this job I was holding the castellated nut so lightly I didn't need to do that and in no time at all I reprofiled the slots so it looks like a proper castellated nut now and this time when I fit it to the gudgeon pin with the washer in place the split pin goes all the way through and I can bend the legs out at the bottom. This will stop the nut from ever unwinding from the gudgeon pin which would not be good at all really if you think about it. Once I fitted the good jump in an oil box on one side, I repeated the process for the other side. And here, as I rotate the crankshaft, you can see the crossheads going back and forth, and you can see how close these oil boxes are to each other. They're very close, but just close enough they don't touch each other, so there's no problem there. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.